Hi, I'm Diamond. I'm a black woman who spends hundreds of dollars on my hair every month. I've even had my own YouTube channel on hair since I was 18. Every year, I spend about $3,000 on my hair, and every year, that price has gone up. So, at the age of 23, I've spent almost $30,000 on my hair, but I'm definitely not alone on this. On average, I probably spend anywhere from five to six thousand dollars on my hair products. I spend about two thousand dollars a year on hair, which is crazy to me. Seven to eight thousand a year. Like two thousand dollars a year on products, like seriously. African American consumers dominate the entire beauty industry, contributing to about 85% of all sales in the U.S. in 2017, even though we only make up 14% of the population. Market research firm Mental values the black hair industry at $2.54 billion. But that estimate doesn't include hair accessories, wigs, weaves, extensions, electric hair care products, hair care services provided in salons or by individuals, or products sold through salons. If the data included these products, the $2.54 billion figure would be much, much larger. But before we dive into the business of black hair, let's talk about the basics. There are tons of ways to categorize and break up the black hair industry. To keep it simple, let's talk about the two biggest subgroups. The business of weave and extensions, and the business of keeping up your real hair. When it comes to real black hair, there are two main types, relaxed and natural. Natural hair is essentially the way it grows out of your head. Within natural hair, there are three main types based on your curl pattern and texture, four, three, and two. Afro hair tends to fall under the four category. Then there's relaxed hair. This hair has been chemically processed to alter or remove the curl pattern. Both relaxed and natural hair can be put into protective styles. These are styles that require extensions like braids, weaves, and wigs. They're widely used to protect black hair from being over manipulated since it's so fragile. Most black women dish out big bucks on their hair, regardless of whether they have natural or relaxed hair. Weaves, wigs, and extensions are the most expensive type of protective style. Depending on the quality of hair, a weave or wig can run you anywhere from $200 to $2,000, and anywhere from $50 to $300 to install it. Extensions aren't the only products that black women spend hundreds on either. While it may sound counterintuitive, one of the biggest driving forces behind black women spending so much money on our hair is the natural hair movement. While almost every aspect of the hair industry is on the rise, the sale relaxers are down 26% since 2006. More black women are opting to wear their hair naturally curly and throwing away the relaxers. But that also means spending a lot more money on natural hair products to care for those curls. Yeah, I spend so much money on my hair because I feel like I have to. Um, when you have natural hair such as ours, it's naturally kinky and coily. Anywhere that there's a turn in your hair, so to speak, a curve, it's room for potential breakage. Black women can sometimes spend hundreds a month on their hair because it's harder to maintain the health of it compared to other demographics. The curlier your hair, the drier it is because the oil from your scalp has a hard time reaching the rest of your hair strands, which inevitably leads to breakage. A lot of our clients especially come from a point of being product junkies, you know, they're constantly trying this, trying that to see what works. Unfortunately, a lot of the labeling isn't that great as well, um, so you really don't know what is going to work for you. While salon visits, weaves, and extensions cost a lot of money, doing your natural hair at home can add up as well. Even though black women with type 4 hair only wash their hair one to three times a month, we use a whole lot of products to make up for it. Half of black women use three to four products as part of their hair care regimen, according to Mental. But my friend Olivia uses twice that. First, she washes her hair with shampoo, followed by a conditioner. Then she uses two different deep conditioners. In the fourth step, she applies a leave-in conditioner, followed by a styling gel. Then she seals the moisture in with an oil. And finally, she uses Eco Styler Gel for her edges. Olivia spends roughly $82 for the products she needs on a wash day. 
even though the black community is spending billions a year on their hair, the U.S. is missing out on that market. The U.S. is the world's biggest consumer of extensions, but it's not a major supplier. India-based Godrej, China-based Rebecca, and UK-based Great Lengths are the biggest producers in the hair extension business. India and China are the world's leading hair exporters. India exporting more than 6 million pounds of hair in 2017, and China exporting more than 1.5 million pounds. Data from the United Nations shows that countries around the world collectively imported almost $1.5 billion in wigs in 2017. The U.S. imported more than $600 million in wigs that same year. But keep in mind, true human version hair sold online by these vendors abroad is not typically what you find in American beauty supply stores. That hair is highly processed or fully synthetic, even if it claims to be virgin hair. And even though Black women are driving up sales in the ethnic hair industry, a majority of Black beauty supply stores are actually not Black-owned. Korean Americans control almost all major components of the beauty supply business in the U.S., according to Bobza. Bobza aims to establish more Black-owned beauty supply stores worldwide, since Black people are its major consumers. But the evidence remains largely anecdotal. Dr. Tiffany Gill wrote a book about it, but even she points out that the numbers are hard to pin down. If you look at many of the industry catalogs and places where people buy um, beauty products, you will see that many of that, much of that material is actually written in Korean. Um, and so it actually helps to perpetuate a certain kind of monopoly over the industry. Data on South Korean black beauty shop owners aren't the only statistics we've had trouble finding. The beauty industry is a really complicated industry to wrap um, uh, to wrap our brains around um, with finding data and other kinds of things because it is really unregulated, um, particularly um, with the fact that it is in many ways an immigrant economy um, where we see connections being made from countries um, like China and in Asia that are importing these products. Um, it's unregulated to the point where we're having a hard time sort of wrapping our, our head around some of the numbers and what's happening, but also in terms of issues of things like health, um, in terms of many of these products, whether or not they've been tested properly, what are some of the kind of health um, issues, the long-term use of these products, a lot is still unknown. Um, there's data that's out there, but there's still a lot that's unknown about this industry. Regardless of who dominates what portion of the black hair industry, it's still generating billions. And even though the U.S. is missing out on a lot of money to be earned from the supply chain, it has figured out how to capture another corner of the market. America has the most lucrative hair care market in the world. The entire market, including non-black hair care, is valued at 15 billion, according to Statista. And unlike the weave industry, the U.S. accounts for a large portion of the global hair care market, roughly 30%. And in recent years, Big name retailers like Target and Walmart have started to carry black hair products, including Shea Moisture, Curls, and Miss Jessie's. Larger beauty companies like L'Oreal and Revlon also begin to cater to the black hair market. L'Oreal actually operates the brand Dark and Lovely. It also acquired the brand Curls Daughter in 2014. And Revlon runs Cream of Nature, which sells natural hair products and relaxers. But the fact remains, the U.S. still has a whole lot of catching up to do if it wants to capture more of the market for black hair. Experts are optimistic there's room to break in, given that demand continues to rise exponentially. We're very pleased with the future of the black hair care industry, where it's going, because uh, more entrepreneurs, more young people are getting into uh, the business, and it's just, it, it's exploded, because now with the internet, uh, it allows individuals to get in quicker without a lot of capital. And salon owners say that business is booming. We have definitely seen a spike in the natural hair movement and with our business. And there are new products coming on the market every day. It remains to be seen how much of that money is going to be going to American businesses. But I'm poised to be spending more than $150,000 on my hair over the next 50 years.